Well, five seconds is enough time that what we're talking about is a stable fusion reaction. Um, well, well, I should say that the amount of energy actually made in this reaction was, well, first of all, it's less, a lot less than the energy put in. Um, and secondly, it, it is probably enough to keep you going in cups of tea for a year. I mean, we're, we're not talking about a vast amount of energy, but we are talking about something that's very hard. Um, now, the first time that humans made a fusion reaction, it was in a bomb, and it was in 1952, and the bomb was big enough that the president of the US was informed of the fusion reaction by being told that the island it was on no longer existed. Um, and I think it's a measure of how hard it is to control that fusion reaction that 70 years later, we, we've just managed to brew a couple of teas. Um, but as, as you say, the reason we're going at this is the promise is just, I mean, it, it's, you, you get a bit swivel eyed and, and look, look like a lunatic when you talk about it, because the promise is astonishing. This is a, a solution to the human condition. It is limitless uh, energy without the downsides, without the radiation, without the carbon. And that's why everyone's having, having a really good go. And, and it's interesting, this is the reaction that powers the sun. It's incredibly, incredibly hot. As I understand it, the big, big problem about doing this on Earth is that there is nothing that we have that could hold such heat. It would burn through literally anything we have. So it needs to be done in some sort of suspended plasma tube. It can't touch the sides. This needs to be a floating burn, if, 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 that, if, if I've understood it correctly. Otherwise, it will just melt through literally everything. Is that the problem that we're running up against? Yeah, that, that's, that's essentially it. Um, so it's not just the, the sun does this at the temperatures in the sun, but the sun's really big, so it has gravity to help. We need to do it at the temperatures of 10 times the sun. So, so when this happened, the hottest place in the solar system, potentially in a large part of the universe, was in Oxford. Um, and that's, that's the difficulty, because there is nothing that can hold it. So it requires exceptionally powerful powerful magnets so that you can maintain this away from the walls of the torus in which it's held. And there, when you do so, the hydrogen, two different kinds of hydrogen will bash into each other and fuse to form helium, and you get one neutron powering off. And that's the energy that we're trying to exploit is the energy in that neutron.